Now we're going to consider uh, some of the molecular mechanisms of how epithelial cells work. And in particular, we're going to focus on how glucose is absorbed in the small intestines. And therefore, the epithelial cell type that we're going to consider are the transport epithelia, which again are single cell, it's a single cell layer that controls the movement of molecules. And in particular, it's in this case absorbing glucose from the gut lumen, that is the interior of the gut, and moving it into the interstitial fluid where it can be absorbed by the circulatory system. Now, epithelial cells are uh, typical in the balance of ions across their cellular membrane. And that um, different concentration of ions across the membrane turns out to be really important to this transport story. So let's focus in on a cellular membrane here where on the right hand side we have the interior of the cell. We can see that it's got a high concentration of potassium, whereas on the outside of the cell we have a high concentration of sodium. Okay, And this difference in concentration is in part facilitated by active transport. That is, there are transmembrane proteins, and this, uh, this particular transmembrane protein will move sodium against its chemical concentration gradient to extract it from the interior of the cell and to push it into the interstitial fluid outside the cell. And potassium is transported in the opposite direction. This requires energy because it's moving those ions against their chemical concentration difference across the membrane. So that is supplied, that energy is supplied by ATP. And as it's hydrolyzed into ADP, that provides a source of energy. This is the intracellular source of energy, ATP, uh, that is used as like an energetic currency for activities inside of the cell that require energy. So this transmembrane protein is known as sodium potassium ATPase. And sodium potassium ATPase is an example of a carrier protein. Okay, so carrier proteins are transmembrane proteins that change conformation to move molecules. They don't necessarily have to use active primary active transport. We'll see examples in a moment of other uses of energy other than hydrolyzing ATP but they do go through a conformation change and they traverse the membrane. Okay, another category of transmembrane proteins that matters here is illustrated by a consideration of uh, potassium. And cell membranes are leaky for potassium and that leakiness is uh, facilitated by pores that are specific to, to potassium. So only potassium uh, can traverse this transmembrane protein um, so the potassium pore is also known as a leak channel. And because the potassium is moving down its chemical concentration gradient, uh, that process doesn't require energy. And so that transport is, is what we call facilitated diffusion. Okay, so the potassium pore is an example of another kind of transmembrane protein. It's called a channel protein. Okay, and it, it cannot... Um, hydrolyze ATP. It cannot do primary active transport. Instead, it can only be allow the ions to move across the membrane through facilitated diffusion uh, through a water-filled opening. Okay, so channel and carrier proteins are important for this story of glucose absorption in the small intestine. So let's focus on that. Okay, here we're back to the cartoonish figure of the body, and we're going to focus in on a few of the cells in the small intestine. Okay, these are the epithelial cells. Uh, they have a sort of Bart Simpson type appearance, and that's because the apical surface has these villi, these fingers that serve to enhance the surface area that is exposed to the gut lumen. Okay, so up top, we have maybe a meal that has been digested and now would be absorbed, and that meal includes uh, glucose molecules. Now these epithelial cells by themselves do not do the whole job, okay? The goal is to extract the good nutrients. So imagine you swallow a cheeseburger here, it makes its way into the stomach, gets all churned up and produces a liquid slurry of nutrients. 
Okay, we want to absorb those nutrients, but we don't want to absorb the waste products. Instead, we eventually want to poop those out. Okay, so what that means is that this epithelial cell needs to identify the nutrients and only extract those from the gut lumen and bring them into the interior of the body and not allow anything to bypass those gatekeeper cells. And in order to block the um, flux of molecules around the cells, there are some extracellular structures that knit together those epithelial cells. Now, the first are known as desmosomes, and that provides a structural connection uh, that may give some toughness to the membrane. Uh, but there are also tight junctions, uh, which provide a chemical barrier, uh, thereby prohibiting uh, the movement of at least large molecules around the cells. All right, so the challenge here is to move the glucose. That's the nutrient that the cell needs to identify and to transport. And one barrier for the glucose transport is the fact that quite often the concentration of glucose in the interior of a cell, because those epithelial cells need to, or quite often will use glucose as a source of energy, the concentration inside the cell can be higher than in the gut lumen. And that's what we see represented here, where we have a relatively high concentration of glucose. Okay, that's a problem because we need to move glucose into the interior of the cell, and that's going to require moving it against its chemical concentration gradient. Okay, so given what I said earlier, you should be thinking, ah, there's got to be a way of hydrolyzing ATP, a source of intracellular chemical energy, in order to get that glucose into the cell. So you might at first think, well, maybe there's a pump that hydrolyzes ATP, it grabs on the glucose and shoves it into the interior of the cell. Maybe that's what, um, what does it. It turns out that's not the case. Instead, there's sort of an indirect use of ATP. And again, that's supplied by sodium potassium ATPase. So we have sodium potassium ATPase transporting potassium and sodium, and in particular, we're going to focus on the effects of sodium, it makes the concentration of sodium really low in the interior of the cell compared to these spaces of the gut lumen and the interstitial fluid that are outside the cell. Now, a concentration difference because of chemical diffusion, wanting to move um, dissolved substances, solutes, down the concentration gradient, then a difference in concentration can serve as a source of energy. And that's how we're going to get glucose into the interior of the cell. In particular, there is a co-transporter that will grab onto a sodium ion at the same time that it grabs onto a glucose molecule. And it will allow the glucose to enter into the cell because it is simultaneously allowing the sodium to move down its chemical concentration gradient. Okay, so even though this co-transporter is not hydrolyzing ATP directly, it's taking advantage of the concentration difference in sodium that is created by sodium potassium ATPase. So it's sodium potassium ATPase is the motor that's creating a source of potential energy, that is the concentration difference on the apical surface of the cell, that is then captured by this co-transporter uh, shown in red. Now, once we have the glucose mole molecule in the interior of the cell, then we can make use of facilitated diffusion to allow it to traverse into the interstitial fluid. So what this is illustrating are three types of carrier proteins. First of all, we have sodium potassium ATPase, which we've already mentioned. And this guy is going to appear over and over again in this course. Um, next, we have the carrier protein, the symporter, that's taking advantage of the uh, sodium gradient. Okay, this is sodium glucose symporter. The name isn't as important as the principle, which is that it's using that source of potential energy, the concentration difference in sodium. And the transport that it's facilitating is known as 
secondary active transport in contrast to the primary active transport provided by sodium potassium ATPase. Now, all we need on the basal membrane is the ability to differentiate, uh, differentially allow glucose to move across that membrane. And that's facilitated by something called a glut transporter, which is another carrier protein that is fueled by facilitated diffusion, just allowing molecules to move down their concentration uh, gradient. Okay, so in a prior lecture, we talked about molecular motion, the driving forces, chemical diffusion. We talked about colloid osmotic pressure and the electromotive force. Okay, here we have an epithelial cell that's taking advantage of these driving forces and we're adding the primary active transport as well to establish a concentration difference in sodium. And this is getting at the question of how membranes control molecular flux, okay? What we see here are three kinds of carrier proteins that are characterized by how they use energy or don't use energy. Okay, so again, carrier proteins are transmembrane proteins that change conformation to move molecules, but we see that we can differentiate them based on how they're using energy. And we, in the beginning, contrasted carrier proteins with channel proteins, which you can think of just sort of holes in the membrane that allow those holes are specific to a particular molecule, okay? So they're allowing the motion of those molecules to move according to facilitated diffusion, that is down their chemical concentration gradient. And there's two categories of channel proteins. We're not gonna go in great detail right now, but the first is what we saw at the beginning, the potassium leak channel, the, a pore is where it's always open. The cell can change the density of pores. So over time, it can vary the permeability of the membrane, uh, but it's not what we call gated, which is the other category of channel protein. Gated channels are triggered by some form of energy. We'll get into details on that later, or some form of information. And those gated channels can change the permeability of the membrane dynamically and over really short time scales. Uh, so more on that later. 